Hey guys, it's Nick, and in this video, I want to talk about this record tax settlement of $7 billion that James Simmons and Robert Mercer at Renaissance Technologies, among others, is going to have to pay the government for back taxes on their investment gains that they claimed was long-term gains, but the government argues that they're short-term gains. So I'm going to explain how this whole mechanism works and how they were able to try to claim this. It is really crazy. So stay tuned if you want to see how the rich really avoid taxes. Now, I did a little video about how to avoid paying taxes if you make up to $100,000. Uh, these guys made something like $34 billion and only paid $7 billion in taxes instead of like $14 billion. And the money that they've been holding while they've been fighting the IRS for these last seven years has also been earning a return. So I'm going to look at what that might look like at the end of the video. So stay tuned. Now, for those that don't know, Renaissance Technologies is based in New York, uh, started by James Simmons. He's like a math PhD. He was the head of Stony Brook Math Department. He won all these awards. He hires only like PhDs in computer science and physics and statistics. Nobody really from Wall Street, just really smart PhDs. And they trade like crazy and they are the most successful hedge fund in history. Beating out Warren Buffett, George Soros, uh, Ray Dalio, all these guys. And he has a fund, the Medallion Fund, that's only available to him and family and employees. And that fund has made something like 66% per year annualized over like the last 30 years. So that blows away any other hedge fund. And that's something to think about for you people who think that you're gonna make 500% a year or 1,000% a year for the next 10 years by just reading some message boards or something. These guys hire hundreds of PhDs and physics professors and all kinds of stuff. And they are able to make 66% a year, which is huge compared to most hedge funds, which, you know, average 10, 15, 20, 25%. And that's considered really good. So these guys are blowing these things out of the water. And yet they're still finding ways to not pay the taxes on these gains. So this is a crazy story. Let's take a look at it now. So James Simmons founded Renaissance Technology following a decade as the chair of the Department of Mathematics at Stony Brook University in Long Island. And this is a description of what they do. So see if you think you can compete with this by reading a few Reddit boards or uh, watching a few TikTok videos. The firm uses quantitative trading where the staff tap into its petabyte scale data warehouse to assess statistical probabilities for the direction and security prices in any given market. Staff attribute the breadth of data on events peripheral to financial and economic phenomena that Renaissance takes into account and the firm's ability to manipulate large amounts of data by deploying scalable technological architectures for computation and execution. You got that? Pretty simple, right? <laughs> and they hire quants with non-financial backgrounds like computer scientists, mathematicians, physicists, signal processing experts, and statisticians. In 2013 article, a journalist described Renaissance staff as math geniuses running Wall Street. Of his 200 employees ensconced in a fortress-like building in unfashionable Long Island, New York, a third have PhDs, not in finance, but in fields like computer science, physics, mathematics, and statistics. Renaissance has been called the best physics and mathematics department in the world. And according to Weatherall, avoids hiring anyone with even the slightest whiff of Wall Street bona fides. And since 1988, his flagship medallion fund has generated average annual returns of 66% before charging hefty investor fees, 39% after fees, racking up trading gains of more than $100 billion. No one in the investment world comes close. Warren Buffett, George Soros, Peter Lynch, Stephen Cohen, and Ray Dalio all fall short. So even with making almost $100 billion or so, they found a way to not pay $7 billion in taxes. 
So here is the story on how they agreed to a settlement to pay $7 billion to the IRS for back taxes. So several current and former members of Renaissance Board and investors in one of its funds will pay back taxes to the IRS, including founder Jim Simmons, whose net worth is about $25 billion, and Robert Mercer. And the settlement could total $7 billion, and that Simmons agreed to pay the IRS an additional settlement of $670 million. Now, all of these articles, they mention the headline $7 billion settlement, but they don't really describe how they were able to get around not paying these taxes. Now, this has been going on since 2014 when Senator Carl Levin presented findings of a year-long probe into basket options. And this is what I'm going to explain in a minute. So here is the opening testimony from that hearing. And in it, he says, In essence, today's hearing is about a series of fictions, one piled on top of another. Fictions that major banks and their hedge fund clients use to avoid taxes and federal leverage limits. The key financial product involved in these fictions is called a basket option. The basket options examined by the subcommittee were developed and sold by two banks, Deutsche Bank and Barclays Bank, to more than a dozen hedge funds. Together, the bank sold 199 basket options to hedge funds that used them to make over $100 billion in trades. Two of the largest basket option users were Renaissance Technologies, known as Rentec, and George Weiss Associates. Although there were minor differences in specifics, the basket option basics work like this. The bank sold its hedge fund client a structured financial product called an option whose payoff equaled the profits generated by a basket of securities held in a designated account at the bank. The basket here is key. It was an account with ever-changing contents. Technically, the account and the securities in it contained were held in the name of the banks in its own trading account. The hedge fund put up 10% of the cash needed to buy the securities, and the bank lent the other 90%. Now, here's the definition on what a basket option is. It's a type of financial derivative where the underlying asset is a group or basket of commodities, securities, or currencies. As with other options, a basket option gives the holder the right but not the obligation to buy or sell the basket at a specific price on or before a certain date. And so the example they give here is a currency basket option. Assume an international U.S. company wants to buy a basket option on Canadian and Australian dollar versus the U.S. dollar so that if the Canadian and Australian dollar drops against the U.S. dollar, they want to be able to sell them at a specified price so as to avoid further deterioration. In this case, they will buy a put with a basket containing the Canadian U.S. dollar and the Australian to U.S. dollar. And so this example is saying that they start this option with these two currencies and hold this position until the term end of the option. But that's not what Renaissance technology was doing in their basket options, as Carl Levin talks about here. So he goes on to say, this arrangement included a number of fictions which defied reality, but resulted in big profits for the hedge funds and the banks. First, though the structure was designed to create the appearance that the bank owned the assets in the basket option account, the hedge fund made all the trading decisions for those accounts and, in fact, used the bank's computerized trading system to execute trades in the account. Rentec estimates that its trading through basket option accounts averaged more than 100,000 trades each day or about 30 million trades a year. Also, the hedge fund reaped all of the trading profits, even though the financial structure created the illusion that the bank owned the assets. The beneficial owner, not the real owner, was the hedge fund. So the subcommittee staff estimates, based on basket option profits that Rentec reported from 2000 to 2013, that Rentec actually avoided paying more than $6 billion in taxes doing it this way. So I'm going to explain to you as simply as possible how this basket option works. So consider one of these laboratories where they have these machines. This is called the glove box. 
where the guy stands outside of this box, but he puts his hands through these gloves and starts doing things inside this box, okay? So consider this guy to be Renaissance Technology or Jim Simons or any of the people from Renaissance. And this box is Deutsche Bank or Barclays. So here's how the basket option for Renaissance worked. Instead of just putting a basket of stocks into that box and then buying an option on it from the bank, what they would do is they would have a whole bunch of stocks in that box. Now that box is technically owned by the bank and Renaissance would put up 10% like margin and the bank would put up the other 90%. So basically they're getting 10 times margin, um, which is supposed to be illegal. After 1929, they changed the law so that broker dealers can only give you uh, $1 for every $1 you had to invest. So 50% margin. Here they're getting 10 times their margin. So that right there is technically, I don't know if it's illegal, but it's not allowed. So the way the basket option work with Renaissance is they would go to say Barclays and say, okay, we want you to buy 1000 of these different stocks, put them in that box. And let's say that whole thing is worth a hundred million dollars and they have an index of it, say the index is at 100. They say, we're gonna enter into a call option with you guys at say $100, the index is at 100. So after a year, if what's in that box is worth over 100, we get to keep that gain. And if it drops below the 10% that we put up in margin, we get wiped out and we'll start another box or something like that. And so, Barclays goes and buys that whole 1,000 stocks worth $100 million, puts it in the box and says, okay, you only have to put up $10 million and you can control what gets bought and sold inside that box. So Renaissance hooks into their trading system, into Barclays trading system, and is trading all the stocks inside that box all day long, 100,000 trades a day, making money on these really short-term trades, whether they're a second, a minute, an hour, a day, whatever. These are all short-term trades if they're less than one year. So they trade this thing furiously for a year, and at the end of a year and a day or whatever, they say, oh, look, that box is now worth $150 million when it was originally bought for $100 million. So we're going to exercise our option, which is over one year long, but now it's a long-term capital gain. And so that $50 million we made in profit is a long-term capital gain. And Barclays claims that they own those stocks the whole time and that the whole deal was just one trade with Renaissance, one call option that Renaissance bought on that box, even though Renaissance is in there with their hands, with their gloves, trading all these stocks in that box all day long, 100,000 times a day. Uh, and then at the end of the year, it's up 50% or whatever. And they go, oh, look, this box that we, we bought from uh, Barclays with this call option, it's up 50%. And that's a long-term capital gain. So they did that to the tune of $34 billion in profits. And so the difference between the short-term gains and the long-term gains is about 20 percentage points. So let's say they paid about 20% long-term capital gains when they should have been paying 40% short-term capital gains. And so 20% on 34 billion is like 6.8 billion with all kinds of uh, interest and penalties and stuff like that. They negotiated something like $7 billion. So that's how the rich keep getting richer and don't think you're in the same league as them. Uh, it's a big club and you're not in it, like George Carlin used to say. And one other thing I wanna point out is that they've been negotiating with the IRS since whatever, 2014, during the Senate hearings when this first was brought to light. So let's say that they had $7 billion in extra money that they should have paid to the IRS in taxes. And over the next seven years, they're haggling with the IRS. In the meantime, they're making 
66% on that money if they kept it in their medallion fund. So what does that look like at the end of seven years? <laughs> $243 billion. Uh, I'm not saying they made all of that, but even if they just made a fraction of that, then they made more than enough to pay the IRS and still pocket more than the $7 billion that the IRS is asking them for. So let's look at that. Over seven years, the first year, they get $4.6 billion. Next year, $7.6. Next year, 12, 21, 35, 58, 96. So just by stalling a few years, they can pay off the IRS and come out ahead anyway. So guys, I hope you understand what basket options are now and how Renaissance was able to use it to skirt $7 billion in taxes over the years. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.